Praise God, Chapleton. Wow, what a joy it is to be able to share the Word of God with you and to just take a moment to enjoy the presence of God as we do this morning in this wonderful time of devotion. Uh, you know, I've been talking, uh, I started last week uh, talking about uh, reigning in life, and, and I hope you are following along with me, and uh, I hope the Word of God is being a blessing to you. So let's let's go ahead and continue. <clears throat> I said in uh, in uh, Romans five and verse seventeen, uh, the scripture that we talked about. Uh, it says, "For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they who received the abundance of grace." And that's you and me. If you're truly born again, then that's exactly what we have. You just didn't get a little tinkle. Tinkly winkly, you didn't just get a little bit, a little dab or do you didn't just get that. You got the abundance of grace, you see, and God has given you the gift of his righteousness. And because of that, the scripture says now it puts you in the position now where you ought to reign in life. And that's why I call this this teaching, I call it reigning in life. And, and, and the subtitle is walking in the spirit. Now, you remember in Luke chapter 15 and verse 22, uh, when the father, uh, the father, Jesus speaking, he said, a certain man had two sons. And, you know, Jesus don't talk just to take up space. Every word he says means something. And so he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger son said, Father, give me what is mine. Uh, you know, I'm tired of being under your roof. I'm paraphrasing. T tired of being under your roof governance. I, I want to be my own man. And the scripture said the father gave it to him and he wandered off and went and spent all that he had in righteous living. Well, you see, that's, that's, that's in essence what humanity did when uh, God told us not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And we ate of that. We wandered off from God. Wonder, came from under his, his, his protection, his rule. His governorship, uh, we 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 declared by our actions and by uh, acquiescing to what Satan said. We uh, <clears throat> we declared that we were our own person, our own God. We can do it however we want to do it. We don't need God. Oh man, I tell you. And so and so, remember when the young lad was coming back home? <clears throat> the scripture say in Luke fifteen verse twenty two, but the father said to the servants because the young lad said, I'm going back to my father's house. And when I see him, I'm going to tell him, Father, I'm not worthy to be called your son. Make me as a hired servant. And look what he's, the father said. The father said to the servant, bring forth the best robe. You see that? No, the best robe could only be his robe. See, that's what man was clothed with in the very beginning. See, the best robe is God's robe. And so he said, bring forth the best robe and put it on him. Now, what I want you to see is that the, the, the son, did, it doesn't say anything about this son going and take a shower. You, you notice that? He comes out of a pig slot. It doesn't say that the father stood away from him and told the servants, go clean him up first before he comes to me. N nothing like that. It says the father saw him uh, 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 from a ways away, and the father, the Bible said the father uh, ran towards the son. And when he came to the son, he fell on his neck and kissed him. This is amazing, huh? I'm going to tell you why it's so amazing. Because you see, the dirt on us never pollutes God. <laughs> Are you hearing me? The dirt on us don't pollute God. The life of God, who he is, removes the dirt from off of us. <clears throat> you see, <clears throat> he removes it. And he said, put on him. Now, watch what he said. He said, put on him the best robe. And then listen to this. It says, and put a ring on his hands. The ring is a symbol of authority. You see. It is a symbol of authority. So notice, the guy didn't have to go and do no penance. He didn't have to go and work for it. He didn't have to do any of that. 
the fact that he came back with a repentant heart, the father said, put, put him back in position. Give him back the authority he had before he left the house. And he said, and then put shoes on his feet, which is, which is indicative of the path that he walks now. You see this. So notice when he comes back home, the father puts him back where? In the place of rule. Why? Because notice, he got he got the best robe, which is righteousness, and it was God's grace whereby God accepted him without him having to do anything to deserve it except to repent. You see? And so the, the acceptance of the father brought about the righteousness of the brother that caused them what? That caused them now to be in the position now to rule. He can now rule again. See, I, I, don't, I don't know sometimes how many believers really understand this, uh, how God really sees them now. You see, uh, because we, <clears throat> we, 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 we put such emphasis on sin. I don't have a problem with that. Okay? <clears throat> sin is ugly. It's evil. And uh, we need to talk about it. We need to uh, uh, let believers know about it. Now, I'm, I don't have a problem with that. But like I said before, we should give equal time. And you see, what, what happens is sometimes there are a lot of people in church that have such a difficult time when it comes to grace. Because when you get into the Bible, the grace of God doesn't cost you anything. You don't have to do anything to deserve that. Jesus did it all for us. But now, some people go on the uh, way on the other side of the spectrum and they say, well, uh, you got grace so you just do whatever, you sin whatever, God, God forgives you. But that's totally against the word of God. Because Titus said, the grace of God hath appeared unto all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. We are to live soberly and righteously in this present world. So, you know, it's like I've always said, if a person is truly born again and in fellowship with God and having fun in sin, they don't know God. They have not known him. Because it's impossible to know God. It's impossible to be in fellowship with God and walk with God and enjoy yourself in sin. No, no, no. 1 John 3 and 9 says, the seed of God remains in him. He cannot sin because he's born of God. He cannot practice sin. And so sometimes people go on the other side of the spectrum and they get rid of the thing. But listen to me. Oh man, the grace of God is something else. You hear me? It is something else. And you see, I don't want to take a whole lot of time here, but, but, but it, 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 it goes against uh, uh, our, our natural existence in the earth. You see, because, because we're born into sin, we are bought with this um, uh, propensity in us that we have to work to get something. You see, we, we, that, that's, that's the soul, that's, that's the flesh, is, 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 is that we, we don't have to uh, 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 go to God. We are our own God. You see that? And so it, it, it takes a lot for, for, for us to, to get out of that whole mindset. So as, we, as we're continually learning the things of God and filling our hearts with the things of God, we begin to understand the grace of God and how it functions. This grace is what empowers us to what? To live holy. To live clean. You see that? This is, this, the grace of God is what brings all of that to us. Are you, are you with me? So now let's look at something real quickly. I want you to go to Galatians 
<clears throat> I want you to look at Galatians with me real quickly. Galatians chapter 5. Well, I'm almost out of time. Galatians 5, I'm going to read a verse of scripture. In, 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 in uh, I said Galatians, didn't I? Yeah, Galatians 5 and verse 16. Listen to what it said. It says, this I say then. Another way I could put that, or another way that I understand this, is that Paul by the Holy Spirit is telling me, this is your answer. See, if you, if you want to walk in victory, and understand, walking in victory is not necessarily having a million dollars in the bank. Because there are people that have a million dollars in the bank and don't live in victory. Are you following me? So that in itself <clears throat> does not mean. Now, can you have victory and have money? Of course. Of course. But that in, its, in itself doesn't mean that I'm walking in victory. <clears throat> this is what Paul is saying. Because you see, if I'm going to walk in victory, then I have to rule in life. That means in my choices, my decisions, the way I walk, the way I live, the things I do. Uh, all of those things is the grace of God empowering me to do what? To live a godly life. Or to live a life that's pleasing to God. Are you hearing me? See, I am. Li in other words, I am living life now outside of being governed and controlled by my flesh. I'm, I'm, I'm learning to live life where I'm not governed by my flesh. I'm governed by my spirit by the Holy Spirit, and he empowers and infuses me, and I get my orders, I get the things that I need to know from God, and my soul must follow. You see this? <laughs> do you see this? I hope you do. Well, oh, I'm out of time. <clears throat> I'll tell you what, we'll continue this on next week, okay? I love you guys very much. Remember, the power of the seed. It's not in its size. It's in its contents. God bless. Take care. Bye-bye.